you know, it's interesting once people understand accountability, engagement isn't the issue they thought it was. I look at things that fuel drama or diffuse drama, and one of the things I found that is a major fuel for drama and waste in the workplace is our current approach to engagement. I know that engagement without accountability creates entitlement, and many people are frustrated because they feel like the workforce today acts so entitled, and I know that we created that. All too often we think that accountability it's a place of ownership. It's more of a mindset that I'm looking for. And so when I think about the people that I've led or that I've worked with who are highly accountable, I think of people who, first and foremost, they step up. What I found in the uh, research I've done on engagement is that our approach is flawed, and it's really flawed in three ways. The first way is that we count everyone's vote the same. Everyone's opinion counts the same. And to me, that corrupts our data because I know in any given workplace, we have like Debbie Driver, high accountable, up for anything, succeed in spite of the facts. And then we've got like Vicki Victim who would complain if you gave her free ice cream. And I ask them how they are experiencing the workplace and their opinion counts the same. That just doesn't make sense to me. I want to ditch the drama and turn down the volume on people who believe that they're victims of circumstances and turn up the volume on my best people so that I can know what truly to fix that will help the high accountables in my workplace. The second flaw I found in the engagement philosophy is that we can buy people's love because we can't. But I see whole HR departments working hard to buy people's love through both Coke and Pepsi in the refrigerator and basketball courts. and. They want to believe that that actually drives better performance, but I know that it doesn't. Probably the biggest flaw is the third flaw in the engagement philosophy in that a lot of people believe that engagement drives results, and so if you work on engaging people, they'll automatically deliver results. And I just never saw that come out in the data that I found. And so in the book, I write about the fact that it's not engagement that drives results, it's accountability that drives both results and engagement, and that it's not causal. Engagement doesn't cause results, it doesn't drive results, but accountability, it is causal. Accountability drives engagement. Engaged people are high accountables who choose to be engaged, and it drives results. They're high accountables that can deliver results. So after you look at those three flaws in the engagement philosophy, you've kind of blown it up the question is then what to do next. And what I made sure to do in the book No Ego is not just be a disruptor and talk about where the flaws are and where our current philosophy is, is not working. I made sure that anytime I blew something up, I provided a better new path. And so I follow on my critique of engagement philosophy with a very creative and innovative way to clean up our engagement efforts. And I provide solutions in the book that engagement without accountability drives entitlement, but there's a way to restore accountability into the engagement process. And I show people how to do that so that they bring in the data on engagement like you would in a survey, but we sort it out. We, we get the corruption out of the data by filtering on accountability. So we're only listening to our best people. And the decisions that people make when they listen to their best people are profound. But most of us are making decisions based on very flawed data because we survey everyone and believe everyone's opinion should count the same. I think people will love the couple of chapters I did on engagement. I know that they definitely will invest their money differently and work to please the high accountables, the people in the high state of accountability, and quit worrying about trying to please the victims.